Okay, so hi everyone. Today's class is going to be on a very important inflammatory myopathy that is dermatomyositis. So what are the important inflammatory myopathies that you need to know about? So remember that this is a very important MCQ topic for both rheumatology as well as neurology. So what are the important inflammatory myopathies? So number one, we have dermatomyositis. We have dermatomyositis. And then we have polymyositis. We have polymyositis. Inclusion body myositis. Inclusion body myositis. And then we have anti synthetase syndrome. Anti synthetase syndrome. And then we have immune mediated, immune mediated necrotizing, immune mediated necrotizing myopathy. Okay, so these are the five important inflammatory myopathies that you need to know for the exam. And today's class is going to be on dermatomyositis. So before we go into the class, I put the link to NeuraAccess Pro app. So those who want to access the notes for all the classes I've taken till now, you can go ahead and access it over there. And those who want to discuss MCQs on a regular basis for your DM Neurology Entrance Examinations, I've also put the link of my Telegram group in the description. You can go ahead and join the group over there. Okay, so let's go into the class. So first coming to the epidemiology. So remember that dermatomyositis can occur both in the pediatric as well as adult age group. So when it happens in childhood, it is known as juvenile dermatomyositis. And remember in adulthood, it can be because of two important reasons. So one, it can be an autoimmune phenomenon. It can be an autoimmune phenomenon. Number two, it can be a paraneoplastic phenomenon. So remember that dermatomyositis can be because of autoimmune or paraneoplastic reasons. And like any other autoimmune disorder, it's obviously going to be more common in female patients compared to males. And remember that the inflammatory myopathy that is more common in males is going to be inclusion body myositis. So inclusion body myositis is more common in males, whereas your dermatomyositis and polymyositis are more common in female patients. Now come to the clinical features. So we'll split this into neurological manifestations and dermatological manifestations. So come to the neurological manifestations. Since it is a myopathy, obviously it's going to be a proximal more than distal weakness and it's going to be symmetric. So you're going to have a symmetric proximal more than distal weakness. And remember that rarely some patients will have only weakness without any skin changes. Okay. And sometimes you can have only skin changes. So when you have only skin changes with no muscle weakness, when you have only skin changes with no muscle weakness, it's known as a myopathic, a myopathic dermatomyositis. And you can also have dysarthria, dysphagia, as well as dyspnea if there is respiratory muscle involvement. Now coming to the dermatological manifestations. Remember that these are very, very important for the exam. Uh, each are very, very possible MCQ questions. So coming to the heliotrop rash. So this is erythematous discoloration of the eyelids along with eyelid edema or eyelid swelling. So erythematous discoloration of the eyelids with periorbital edema. Next, you have Gautron sign as well as Gautron papules. So, Gautron sign is nothing but an erythematous rash over the extensor surfaces of the joints like knuckles, elbows, knees and ankles. Whereas your Gautron papules specifically means the raised erythematous rash over the knuckles. So, it's very important. Gautron papules is a raised erythematous rash over the knuckles. Whereas the erythematous rash over the extensor surfaces of all the joints generically, that is your knuckles, elbows, knees and ankles is Gautron sign. So anteriorly, you're going to have the V sign. So V sign is going to present anteriorly. That is nothing but a rash on the sun exposed anterior neck and chest. And posteriorly, you're going to have your shawl sign, which is nothing but the rash on the sun exposed part of the back of the neck and shoulders. Your other cutaneous manifestations, you can have nail bed telangiectasia, subcutaneous calcium deposits. And remember, we always already discussed earlier, that is amyopathic dermatomyositis. So patients are going to have only dermatological manifestations without any muscle weakness. And the other skin issues, the patient can have severe pruritus. So don't forget Gautron's papules, 
sign, these sign, shawl sign, these are very important MCQ questions. Okay, so what are the other features? So because of involvement of the cardiac musculature, the patient can develop cardiomyopathy and cardiac failure, cardiac conduction defects and interstitial lung disease. Patient can also develop interstitial lung disease and fibrosis. And because of involvement of the visceral smooth muscle, the patient can have delayed gastric and esophageal emptying. And remember, renal phenomenon can also be seen, or can also be seen, especially if the patient is going to have overlap syndromes. Okay, coming to the investigation. So, like for any other inflammatory myopathy, you're going to have a non-specific rise in your serum creatinine kinase. So, in 70 to 80 percent of the cases, you're going to have a raised creatinine kinase. In 10 percent of the cases, where you're going to have a normal creatinine kinase, you can look for the other muscle enzyme that is serum aldolase. So you're going to have a raised serum aldolase in 10% of the cases with a normal serum creatinine kinase. Okay, now come to the very, very important point. What are the antibodies that are seen in dermatomyositis? So anti-nuclear antibody is non-specifically raised in dermatomyositis. It is not specific. Next, we have four important antibodies that you need to know. Each has its very, very important point. So coming to anti-MDA5, that is melanoma differentiation antigen 5. So presence of anti-MDA5 antibodies means that the patient is going to have a lot of dermatological manifestations compared to neurological manifestations. So the patient can have an amyopathic dermatomyositis, a severe palmar rash, digital ulcers and a rapidly progressive ILD. So always remember anti-MDA5, more of cutaneous manifestations, presence of amyopathic dermatomyositis and ILD. Next, these two antibodies, that is anti-TIF1 and anti-NXP2, these two antibodies means that dermatomyositis is a consequence of a paraneoplastic disorder, that is, there is an underlying cancer. That is, dermatomyositis because of an underlying cancer. So, remember, paraneoplastic dermatomyositis is because of anti-TIF1 and anti-NXP2 and dermatomyositis is associated with an underlying cancer in 15% of cases. So in 15% of cases, you're going to have an underlying malignancy and those patients are probably going to have anti-TIF1 and anti-NXP positive. The other important antibody you need to know is anti-ME2. So anti-ME2 means two things. Number one, an excellent clinical course. So the patient is going to have benign dermatomyositis with a very excellent response to immunotherapy. Point number two, it is very, very specific for dermatomyositis. So you have to remember these four antibodies are very, very important. Anti-MDA5 is for amyopathic dermatomyositis. Lot of dermatological manifestations like severe palmar rash, digital ulcers and interstitial lung disease. Anti-TIF1, anti-NXP2 positivity means that there is probably an underlying malignancy. Anti-ME2, remember two things, very very specific antibody and dermatomyositis with a good course, good clinical course with excellent response to immunotherapy. Okay, now coming to EMG. So in EMG you're going to have Non-specific findings, nothing that is very specific for dermatomyositis. So positive sharp waves, fibrillation potentials, complex repetitive discharges, early recruitment of small amplitude, short duration, polyphasic motor units. So remember that none of this is actually specific for dermatomyositis. This can be seen in any other inflammatory myopathy. And if you happen to take a skeletal muscle MRI, you can make out edema of the affected muscles along with fasciitis. Okay, now coming to the histopathology. So we have a few important potential MCQ questions over here. So point number one, in dermatomyositis, you're going to have perifascicular atrophy. This is the most important histopathological finding over here. So here you can see there is perifascicular atrophy. Okay, so you have perifascicular atrophy. Very, very important. Perifascicular atrophy. Next. The inflammation that is seen in dermatomyositis is more in the perimysium compared to the endomysium. So perimysial inflammation is more predominant compared to endomysial inflammation. This is in contrast to polymyositis and inclusion body myositis where you have more of an endomysial inflammation. So remember in dermatomyositis, your perimysial inflammation is more than your endomysial inflammation. Whereas in dermatomyositis, Sorry, whereas in polymyositis and inclusion body myositis, you're going to have endomysial inflammation more than perimysial inflammation. Next, point number three, in immunohistochemical staining, you're going to have positive staining for MXA, that is mixovirus resistance protein A. This is a very, very important MCQ question. 
So here you can see this black part over here. This is nothing but positive immunohistochemical staining for MXA. That is mixovirus resistance protein A. So don't forget these three points. The hallmark feature is perifascicular atrophy. Point number two, the inflammation is more in the perimysium compared to the endomysium. Point number three, positive immunohistochemical staining for mixovirus resistance protein A. That is MXA. Okay, so summarizing that, so in HP you are going to have perifascicular atrophy, but however, even though it is a characteristic finding, it is seen only in 50% of the patients. And very, very important, positive immunohistochemical staining for MXA, that is mixovirus resistance protein A, the inflammatory infiltrate is going to be more in the perimysium compared to the endomysium. That is, more predominant endomysial inflammation is going to be seen in inclusion body myositis and polymyositis. Next, in electron microscopy, you can make out tubular reticular inclusions in the endothelial cells. If you happen to take a skin biopsy, remember that the basal layer of the keratinocytes, the basal layer of the keratinocytes are the most to be damaged and the infilt inflammatory infiltrate is usually absent or minimal. But if it is present, it is usually seen in the dermoepidermal junction. Okay, so this is about dermatomyositis. I think I have covered most of the important points. Thank you.